Hi, I'm Mike Wildman and this is Ralph, the Cocker Spaniel, and today we're going to be doing an alternative groom on him. Um, so it's not hand stripping and it is not uh, clipping. I'm using the Coat King, I'm using a fine Coat King. Uh, I'm going to take out all the body hair on Ralph, giving a nice soft look, as though he were hand stripped, but I'm not using my finger and thumb and it's going to save a lot of time and this is for the pet dog in the salon where the owner might want them to have the hand strip finish or the hand strip look this is a good way of achieving that but I wouldn't do it for a show dog or a dog that I was exhibiting because it can change the quality and the coat's texture over a period of time because the coat king is a cutting instrument and it is a blade so it will actually cut the hair rather than pulling it from the root as though you, if you were hand stripping Always follow the natural coat pattern and the way the coat would lie naturally. If you come down over the rib, you're taking out all the body hair. Cockers have got really flexible skin, so you can, by pulling the skin taut, you can manage to sweep over the rib much easier than if you weren't. I'm grooming Ralph today on the Groomer's Best Friend, which is a new piece of equipment designed for the grooming salon. It's a, a tray system that sits on top of the grooming table. They can be made for any, any grooming table, made to measure, and come in a range of colours, bespoke to your salon furniture, what you already may have. Um, and what it is, is the tray keeps all the hair and it doesn't go onto the floor. And as we're grooming, there's a switch on the side here for the vacuum that will take all the hair away. We just push the hair towards the opening, it'll take all that hair away. So as we groom, we can take the hair, remove the hair as we go. There's added bonuses with the uh, vacuum tray system, the groomer's best friend. We have the lighting around the edge in here, also a slight a slight lip is raised which keeps our tools in on the table and they don't fall on the floor. The hoover is, is stowed away in a cabinet which is next to the table. And I usually go around 8 to 10 dogs a day and I only have to empty my hoover once a week. It does come out of the cabinet and has attachments so I can hoover the rest of the salon i.e. the walls and things like that as well. So it's not just a hoover that's used for the table, it can come out of the cabinet and be used in the salon as well. They have an air freshener inside the cabinet. You won't be able to smell that on the, on the video, of course, but there is an air freshener in the cabinet which just freshens up the salon every time we turn the switch. There's a vent at the side here which the air freshener smell comes through. So just carry on Coat King in Ralph's coat, do it in nice long strokes. Again, following the natural coat pattern, removing all the dead hair. You want his coat to be nice and flat. You can do some Coat Kinging in the bath and conditioning. I didn't do that today because I wanted to show you the whole dog being done. Coat King blades will, will over time, periods of time, blunt and off and may need to be replaced. You can buy these from any grooming retailer and you can actually just buy the replaceable heads rather and they just screw off here and here and you just take the head off and then replace it and put the bolts back on and then rather than having to buy a whole Coat King you just buy the replaceable heads. If doing it in the bath, I usually coat the dog up with conditioner and do the same as I'm doing now while the conditioner's on the dog. Just take out as much of the coat as I can. Come down over the first and second thigh, the dog. Everything about a cocker spaniel should be natural and flowing. You shouldn't have any lines 
or any no you don't want a line here so you want to flow right down into the skirt or feathering Ralph hasn't got a lot of skirt it's quite fine hair he's got for a cocker so it doesn't protrude or stick out when standing from the rear the cocker should have a good rib, rib cage, well sprung, well developed rib, so everything should look nice and fl flush and flow. Nothing should be sticking out, you don't want any bulky hair sticking out. So we'll come all the way down the leg and over, down into the feathering. It's okay if you take the coat king down into the feathering. I will glide it down over the muscle, the rear quarter, and right down onto the top of the hock. And that will give out, take out the, all this bulk hair here. Good boy and it will give some angulation to the dog's rear. So you just continue to coat King until you feel like you've removed enough hair. When it's all looking nice and flat. Okay, so we go down the foreleg, all the way to the foot, on both sides and the front. all the way down the neck, carrying on over the body. It's just continuing to go over and over and over until you're satisfied that you've got enough off of the dead coat. And he's looking quite shiny. As you can see already, it started to transform his color and bring all the blue roan out of him. So we're gonna move on to um, the trim now. I'll come back to a bit of coat kinging later, so I'll move on to doing a bit of trimming. Just clear the hair away on the table with the help of the groomer's best friend. Keeping the place nice and tidy as we trim and go along. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the trimming now. An area of hygiene with a spaniel, especially a cocker, but most spaniel breeds, is the lip folds here. Now Ralph's are actually okay, they're quite tight and flush are his lips here. But some cockers have extremely deep pockets here, just in the lip there, and the saliva run off the canine. If it's allowed to get too hairy in this area, uh, debris builds up uh, food, trapped debris, saliva, and it can cause an infection which is commonly known as spaniel mouth. So keeping this, this is an area of hygiene and very, very important to keep this area clippered or scissored very short and close and it's something to keep an eye out as a groomer for. If you've ever come across one with spaniel mouth, stay Ralph, you'll know about it because it smells like really, really rotten flesh. Um, there's a couple of things you can do to look after it. You can clean it with a solution of hibby scrub, uh, keeping it very short or pack it with folic powder. If the lip folds have become infected, it may result in need of veterinary attention or some antibiotics to sort it out. Um, but as I say, Ralph's quite blessed because he hasn't got really such a deep pocket, but we still want to keep the hair nice and short around here. And it's just for hygiene reasons. As I say, the saliva running off can get compacted and start building up and cause to lead an infection. So you can do this with the clippers or you can do it with scissors. It's entirely up to you. It's just like clipping out a poodle's lip there. So you just take out the clippers, stretch the lip really far back and clean it out there, keeping it nice and short and tidy. And then do the same on the other side as well. As I say, you can do it with scissors if you wanted to. Sorry, Ralph. Keeping it nice and stretched and then just trim it nice and short in the lip fold there. And then you can wash it out when the dog's in the bath. Okay. Now we take the whiskers off a spaniel or cocker, leaving a knife. Does that upset you? <laughs> Leaving a nice clean face and muzzle. So we're just going to take the whiskers off Ralph's face, just to give it a nice clean appearance. Just gently scissor those off. Try not to go too crazy and chip into the hair too much, especially on a red or golden, or black and tan, or anything with tan points, because you'll dull, and dull the coat colour if you do that. So just clean all those lips, good boy and the chin as well. Just taking off all those stray whiskers, it just gives a nicer, cleaner face. Good boy. Okay. 
If um, Ralph's got quite a clean muzzle anyway, but some cockers get very hairy, very hairy muzzles, you might need to do a bit of stripping or you can use the thinning scissors if you want to, just to take away all the unwanted longer hairs on the foreface there and the muzzle. And just clear the hair between the eyes in the stop area there, just to try and define it a little bit. Good boy. So then I'll take the clipper and we'll turn it to a number 10, between 10 and 15. And we're going to clip down from the underjaw and down, and the point of reference to stop is, is at the breastbone, which is the protruding bone that you can feel there. So when you do clip in this area, it's ideal to keep the head nice and far back because the throat can gather, the skin can gather, and if you're not careful, you could end up tearing it open. So keeping the skin, because they're very fleshy our cockers, keep the skin nice and tight like that when you're doing any clipper work. So if you start at the top, run your clipper down in a straight line, and take it down to the breastbone, which is where to stop. And then you're using from the ear down to the point of shoulder. You don't go any further back than there because that's where your coat king would come into it. So come down to the point of shoulder. Okay. So we want this nice and uh, clean here. Just take away that hair. And then we can do the ear on Ralph. Um, a Cocker Spaniel should have low set ears and they should be in line with the corner of the eye. And we want to lower them, it'll give the dog a lovely expression. So we're gonna, all around the edge of the ear canal, it's another, another interest of hygiene. We want it nice and short around the ear canal here. With drop ear breeze, you want to get a good airflow, so that's why we keep it nice and short and tight and close there. It's more for health reasons than anything else, but it does give a nice softness to the head when the ear is much lower. So just taking the clipper again, I'm gonna use the clipper on the top of the ear. Just run it down over the top of the ear, clearing all the hair away from in and around the ear canal. Open the ear up and come away, like so. On some, uh, cock, most Cocker Spaniels, they have some flaps in their ears and, and little folds inside their ears. So you want to always work off when clipping any ear. Don't work into it, just work off the edges rather than working in for safety. Just work off those edges like so. Stop, good boy. Okay, and then you can repeat the process on the other side. We're gonna turn the ear on the other side now, and we're gonna do, <coughs> to lower the ear, we're just gonna take the top third of the ear lever. The lever actually ends where my finger is there, and the rest hanging off is feathering. So we're only gonna take the top third from the ear lever, so not incorporating it into the feathering, otherwise it will come down and be just that little bit too low. So again, with the clippers, just Clip down that top third. Pull the ear forward and get right at the back of the ear as well. Taking down just the top third. And then you can, with your scissors, if you pull this forward, just take off any edges that are sticking over. Just down and bear in mind, don't go any further back than that point of shoulder, which is that bone that's just there. Okay. You can then blend the head in to the ear with the finners just at the very top, just to blend from the coat king to where you've clipped, just at the sides. Just come this way a bit, Ralph. You can see how nice and low I've set that ear now compared to the other side, which is still quite hairy. 
So we're going to repeat the process on the other side and then we're going to move on down to the shoulders. So just clearing the table as we go, keeping the mess to a minimum. Good boy, Ralph. I'm just going to work down the shoulder now. I'm going to put in the front angulation. Ralph's a little bit uh, short in this department. He, he's short in neck and not very good in return of upper arm. Um, I'm going to try and sh show off and give him as good an angle as I, as I can, really. Um, so with the scissors, I'm just going to cut him in to the top of the leg, from the point of shoulder, I'm just going to take him nice and tight to the top of the foreleg. And then just with the thinning scissors, from where we did clipper work to the Coat King, I'm just going to blend, blend in. Just blend into the neck there and shoulder area. We leave the bib of hair hanging from the breastbone, but we just want to separate from that hair to show off his forehand. I think he's got hair gone down his ear. Just tidy that in nice and tight there with your thinners. And that's just giving you the shape to the forehand there. And then repeat the process on the other side. Okay, so we're gonna trim Ralph's leg and uh, leg down into the foot now, but I start first of all and I trim the foot in first. Some uh, cockers are naturally uh, flat coated here or, or lack, they lack hair there. Ralph actually is quite smooth and natural there. Um, a lot of the lighter coloured ones, the 16 different colours in this breed, but a lot of the lighter base colours, goldens, the orange roans, um, the very light blue roans, black and whites tend to be quite natural here. The hair doesn't have any density or thickness to it. Um, if that is the case, and they have quite a big foot, it's quite difficult because you haven't got any hair to flow into to make your nice cat-like foot. The breed standard asks for a cat-like foot. They should have nice, straight, well-boned front legs and a nice, tight cat-like foot. So when trimming the pads out, which I did earlier, just to give you an example and show you, uh, if you push all the hair down to the bottom and then just take across that bottom pad, the hair, and then when trimming the pad, if you open up the foot by pressing with your fingers or thumbs, it'll prise the toes open and enable you to get in there and give a nice clean foot. So I did that earlier. You can also do it with clippers as well. So you can clip inside the pad there, take all the excess hair out. Okay, so place the leg down. So it's nice and straight. And then with your scissors, make sure it's all, obviously it's all been combed out beforehand. With your scissors, these are curved, seven and a half inch. If you take down right to the edge of the foot and we're trimming round the foot and we're looking for a cat-like foot. So it's, it's a cat-like appearance we're looking for. So we're not gonna come between the toenails. We're not gonna dig in on the hair, we're going to keep it nice and straight. We're almost going to come up like this in this fashion, so it's like straight up into the foot. If they have more hair here, it makes it much easier and you can make the foot look much more compacted and more cat-like. So just come around the foot. We want it to look as nice and as neat and as small as possible. So if you lift up the foot, use your comb to make sure you've got all the hair between the, from between the toes pulled out so you're not missing any. Continue to scissor around the foot. Place it back down. 
and just comb it all the hair forward. And then again, repeat the process, just carry on. Good boy. It's easier if the dog is standing up and in the correct position when you do this. Just carry on scissoring round. Have that image in your mind of a cat-like foot. Not all cockers are blessed with nice tight feet. So you have to try and do your best with what you've got hair-wise. And use your talent to make the foot look as or resemble a cat-like foot. Then you can pick it up, comb all the hair through. Just make sure you've got nice and tidy. If you don't do this properly now and check it all, what will happen in a day or two, the dog will have sprouted hairs between the toes and there's bits that will need to come off. So make sure you're very thorough with the feet. Which usually with a show dog, I know this is just a pet groom, go over the feet at the dog show again, just to make sure they were very neat and very tidy. So do that and then repeat the process on the other side. Okay, so uh, just I've scissored the foot in. Um, Ralph hasn't got any excess really hair on the foreleg because I did it with the Coat King earlier, but what he has got is just a bit of overhanging hair. And from when viewed from in front, it's slightly just sticking out. So I'm gonna just lift that up. He's got quite, I always feel for the dog's bone density or the quality of the bone. And he's, he's not a big dog, but he's got enough substance. He carries enough substance. So we can afford to scissor some of this off. So I'm just gonna tidy the ends with the thinning scissors just to straighten this foreleg. So that when he's viewed from in front or when he's moving, you haven't got any excess hair flapping. As I said earlier, everything should just flow and be very smooth and neat and tidy. So we're just taking off any of the excess just by gently scissoring down with the thinning scissor. I'm not taking it down to the bone, we're just tidying this area and smoothing it out. And the same on the inside of the leg as well. Just do that, just down to meet the foot. So it gives a nice appearance to the shoulder we've put in, and then the straight leg down to the foot. The cocker should have a nice straight leg, well boned straight leg. And that's the front end in. Ralph's not carrying excess feather in. Uh, it's nice and fine and silky still, um, but we're still going to shape it up. So starting at the front end, if you comb all this out, keep his, keep his head upright, comb all this forward from underneath the chest there, just comb it all out forward and then we're going to put a nice shape on that, only gentle, just to tidy the edges up. So we start here and just work our way around with the curved scissors and just take it underneath there and it's just tidying and putting an edge on that but you want it to look nice and natural so it's not square it's just rounded off giving him a nice full appearance in the front i'm just gonna take the table up a little bit being tall it helps to get under the underline the lighting's very good on this table and it helps me to see all these stray hairs underneath so i've just hired the table up and i'm going to take the straight scissors and we're just going to continue from where we did the chest hair, just bring it forward and we're just going to take a very little amount off, not a lot at all, but we're going to slightly, I'm going to rise towards the loin and tuck up because naturally they're deep here and then they have a natural tuck up so the dog is not two parallel lines, it should be straight on the top but underneath, if you remove his hair, 
his natural body shape, he rises towards the loin. So to give him that more natural appearance, I'm going to bear that in mind when trimming under the underline, and I'm just going to take it up in a very gentle slope. So it just, I'm just thinking about his body structure and what's underneath it, and that will give you a nice natural look. It won't look natural if it's just a dead straight line under here. You'll lose that natural look, which a Cocker Spaniel should always have a nice natural look. Okay, moving on to the back end. First of all, I'm just going to take the tail to the very tip and find the end and I'm just going to chop all that hair off. The tail should meet the hock joint, which is that joint there, so anything hanging on further than that, just snip it off. Makes it a bit more tidier. Okay, and then underneath the tail, just turn around for me, thank you, Ralph. Good boy. We're going to scissor off all the hair. Very close here. And then if you stand him to the side, If we take off the hair here and make it very short and flat, as we did here, it balances and mirrors up. It will make the dog more square and compact. So at the top of this, just under the rectum there, you just scissor away with the thinners. Nice and close. And standing at the side here, I can see exactly where I'm going with this and what shape I want it to be nice and flat there. And then just over the back of the muscle here, just scissor that off there and it'll show that rear thigh muscle. Cocker spine should have a good width of thigh, well developed hind quarter. And I just want to show off the muscle there by just scissoring it in. So nice and tight underneath the tail there. Just onto these little corkscrew, what we call the rosettes there. Just scissor onto those, that's the point of where to stop. And we're leaving the hair to hang between his rear thighs to cover his modesty. Again, I did the pad earlier on, but when you're trimming pads, if you're struggling or a dog's fighting with you, it's usually because you're handling may be wrong. So use the dog's anatomy and structure to your advantage. So when lifting up this rear paston, it's a very flexible joint, as is the front one as well. Very soft and very flexible. So just use that, just bend back, and then you can get inside there, keeping the dog's leg very close. Don't try or be tempted to pull the dog's leg away, otherwise he's going to start fighting. There's no need to, I'm just literally holding the dog very gentle. There's no need to squeeze tight hold of him at all. The moment you start putting pressure, they may start to struggle. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so comb all the hair down. And again, like we did the forefoot, we're going to find where the foot is and we're going to trim around and we're looking for that cat-like foot again. Push all the hair down and come across the back pad. Good boy, stand still. Push all the hair down and take off anything that's sitting and resting on the table. Right the way around, nice and tight and close to the foot. You can pick it up and just snip away anything that's left hanging around there. Again, if you pull the hair through the toes by opening and then scissor off anything that's left. Give it a nice clean foot. Now we're going to 
shape is stifle, a cocker should have a good sweep or a good bend of stifle, and that's this joint here, what's known as the stifle. If you position the leg into the correct position so the hock is straight, comb all this feather in that's hanging off the back leg, taking the curved scissor, I'm just going to curve and I'm following the dog's natural leg or natural angle. If I take the hair back there, you can see the angulation that the dog has got. He's got a good bend to his stifle. So I'm just tidying the hair and I'm following the actual body lines of the dog to show off what he's got under there. Because he's a coated breed, he can't always show it off if, it's, if he's got too much coat. And then again, if he ha hasn't got a good angulation or a good bend in his stifle, there's a couple of things we can do. We can sweep it in a lot tighter, curve it right up to accentuate and make it look like he has got more of a turned hind quarter. And we can take it very tight here and we can allow the hair to grow on the back pastern or the hock here uh, to grow out more fuller. So when we take it tighter here and sweep it in here and we've got more hair here, we're going to give the appearance of a much more elegant, more angular leg. So there's just a couple of things you can do to improve your dog's hind angulation if it hasn't got sufficient or good enough angulation. You just want to make it look that little bit better. So we don't want to see anything sticking up from the side here. So we just tidy all that off to the top of the hock there. Just thin and blend that in so that when we stand behind, as I said earlier, showing off the muscle now and everything should just flow down to the ground and we're going to scissor this hock in now. So once we've combed it all out, that's what we'll do. So you can do this with straight or thinning scissors if you want to, it's up to you. So just make sure all the hair is combed out and then we're going to scissor down to the ground into the foot. We're not going to remove too much hair. Again, like the foreleg, we didn't take too much off and we want these two to balance. So cocker should have good bone and substance, so don't take too much off. You want it to look nice and chunky. So comb it out at the front and just scissor down to the foot. Don't take it any further back than the line of the foot, otherwise you'll make the dog appear like it's probably slightly sickle hocked or very fine boned. You want to leave some padding of hair here down onto that foot. It makes the dog look chunky and well boned. Okay, and then come behind and scissor straight down that side and down this side as well. And then we can do the back. If the dog hasn't got the angulation you want, as I said earlier, we can leave a bit more. So I don't, I don't ever overdo this part here. I just tidy it, leaving it quite full and thick. If the dog moves narrow, you can remove more off the inside. And if the dog moves a bit wide behind, you can move more off the outside and it'll give the, a more parallel movement when the dog's moving away. Then comb all the hair on the inside of the legs together. And from the hock joint, which is this bone here, you can scissor it into a nice just tidying it up. If you want to soften your hocks and you, ha you haven't got the it as soft as you want, you can just run over those edges like you did on the foreleg. just to tidy off those last bits. And then we can move on to the other leg and we'll come back and tidy it all up later on. Okay, so we've done most of Ralph's trim, um, which leaves us just to do the tail. Um, 
Now, since the docking ban arrived, there isn't really any showbread cockers that are docked now. They're all fully tailed. Um, and when you've stripped out all this back coat or coat cleaned it as we have in this incident, it's all nice and flowing, nice and flat and looking very nice. We want to the tail to, to match that. And if the tail is a bit curly or a bit shaggy, which this is, it doesn't quite look, it looks a bit unsightly. So we're gonna take quite a little, quite a bit of hair off this tail, but this is preference only. Um, the breed standard calls for the tail to be satellite and have a plume of hair hanging underneath and incorporate it with the, with the rest, good boy, with the rest of the dog's feathering. But um, it looks a little bit untidy, so we're gonna give it a good trim down. So we took the end off earlier, and then we're gonna take a good lot off this tail and make it a lot neater. If the feathering on the tail was hanging very well and thick, we'd, you might want to leave it and just scissor it and flag it. It just depends on the owner or their preference. But personally, I think they look much nicer if they're just trimmed right down. So we're just trying to tidy it, really. All right, good boy, Ralph, nearly there. Just going to clear away the hair. Okay. So you can take your thinning scissors as well and just fin over the top of the tail just to tidy it. Comb it all. No. Good boy, stay. We're just tidying it all, making it look a little bit more natural. Okay, so we've finished Ralph's groom now. Um, and what we've done with him today is he's had the spaniel hand strip look, but we've used the coat king. Uh, not recommended for show dogs because it can alter or change the texture of the hair because it is a cutting tool or instrument. And um, all we've done is we've cleared his head, first of all. We've done all down the shoulders, right down to the elbow, over the rib cage, over the rib cage, down over the loin, over the first and second thigh, trying to aim for a very natural look. We've carved out his angulation with it as well. Uh, then we, take, we took the clippers and we did the fore chest, down the throat to the fore chest, stopped at the breastbone. We tidied it in with the thinner scissors and blended it in. We then scissored his foot in and then we took the excess off the leg to smooth it out and make it straight. We trimmed his underline, slightly rising towards the loin, did his foot, his rear, paston, and carved him out slightly under the tail to show off some nice shape and angulation. We then scissored his tail down, and that was our finished Cocker Spaniel in pet groom for, with the Coat King. Okay, so I've used the groomer's best friend today without the H-frame on. Um, because for the purpose of the filming. I'm just gonna come round now and show you the standalone unit, which is this unit here, where the hoover is already inside the unit there, and the table topper. It also has the lights on, which aren't switched on at the moment, with the optional air frame on here, just for the security and safety of the dog. The switch again is on the side here, turns on easily on and off. Back to the, the one all-in-one unit, we can just remove the hoover, the vacuum, out of the cabinet, like so, opening it up to empty, and you can see all the hair that we've captured today, which would have been on the floor otherwise. So, and then you, it just slots back together, like so, and can be easily stowed away inside the cabinet.